You don't want me to talk about sin and temptation, do you? Hmm? Oh, that's okay. We're going to talk about it anyways. If you can avoid what I went through, then that would be great. It's Dave here with another video to touch your heart and bless a new change in your life. So let me ask you a question. Are you addicted? The signs of addiction are a lack of control or inability to stay away from whatever that addiction is. It can be a substance or an addiction can be a behavior. The result is noticing a decreased socialization with others. That's an example. Uh, you can be abandoning commitments or ignoring relationships. That's what we're talking about here. You see, addictions have consequences, and those who suffer from an addiction ignore the risk factors. I can share an example of my addiction to alcohol and sleeping pills. Think of those two things together as I tried to block the world away from me. I ignored the risk of death because the addiction was stronger than the concern of death or the concern of risk. People could see something was not good in me. It affected my relationships. It affected my job performance. I nearly lost my business. But I was delivered and set free. God was there. Let's talk about other addictions. Perhaps this relates to you. So what is a harmful addiction? Well, I've already told you about alcohol and substance abuse. That could be other things like drugs. See, that stuff can kill you. I've already talked about that. What about the addiction to shopping? That kind of addiction empties your pockets from all the money you have. It empties your bank account. What about addiction to sex? That's right, sex addiction. Yep, that can end marriages quite easily. What about online gaming? Well, you spend too much time on that. That'll make you unemployed. What about social media? Well, that disconnects you from the real world. There's so many others. So think of all of these addictions. As an example, I already told you how I was trapped once by addiction with alcohol and sleeping pills. I've been there. I know. But I also know how God delivered me and set me free from those addictions. All of these addictions that we've been talking about result in marriages ending, being fired at your job and so many more consequences. To know how to be delivered, you must know an addiction becomes a real bondage in your life. You have to first acknowledge it. So let's first talk about how an addiction evolves. There's basically four steps. Well, the first step is you get tempted through experimentation. You know, very few people plan or set out to become addicted. I'm going to get addicted to heroin. I'm going to start that next week. No, it's some sort of experimentation. Then after that, it becomes regular use and then abuse. It becomes a routine. Following that, there is the dependency and tolerance. You become acceptable to it. It becomes comfortable to you and you seem to rely on it. And then step four is the addiction. You are held in bondage over the addiction, okay? You are a prisoner of yourself. That's what addiction is. You are a prisoner of yourself. So ask yourself a question. Is there a sense of bondage in a particular area of your life? Are you held captive because of something wrong in your life? Are you concerned about a lack of victory over a certain sin? It is possible that you do not yet understand a truth about God and the word from the Bible from God that can release you. That might mean you are missing church services, you're missing out on the church classes, you're missing out on the church meetings, as well as not reading the Bible and not praying for the understanding from God. If you skip out on that, you're missing so much. If you feel powerless to meet the challenges before you, take encouragement from the promise seen in the scripture, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And the scripture says, 
I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. What does that mean? What does Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 mean? That means we are able to live our lives within the context of God's word and God's principles as shown in the Bible. You see, the principles of the Bible keep you away from ungodly desires. In the scripture, the Apostle Paul looked to spiritual provision of Jesus Christ to find strength, hope, joy, peace, and contentment even in his darkest situation. It is this power from God through the Holy Spirit that transforms hearts and frees minds oppressed by the discouragement of present circumstances. If you are defeated by the circumstance or you feel defeated by the circumstance, hold on to the truth of Romans 8, Romans 8 verse 28. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that God can work your most difficult situation into his good. And the scripture says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I was just reading to you Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Understand this. If you are enslaved to a particular sin, work the truth that is seen in the word of 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 into your life, which promises that if you confess your sin, God is faithful to cleanse you from unrighteousness. Read it. All of these truths and the word from God await the Holy Spirit's manifestation into your life. It is one thing to know about the word of God. It is yet another thing to experience the word of God being worked out in your life. That means you apply what you learn from God and it is written in the Bible. Who cares if I studied theology at Harvard University? You know, I tell my pastor, I, I, I studied at Harvard University uh, theology. He doesn't care, nor should I. I mean, it's good to learn how to study the Bible. What the pastor wants to know is what's in my heart. How do I apply it to my life? Am I receiving the biblical principles through the Holy Spirit and applying it in my life? You see, if I don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me, it doesn't matter where I study theology. It's great that it taught me how to study the word. It's even much better and more applicable if I take the biblical principles and apply it to my life while being guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what matters. God's word in the Bible will have no effect upon you unless you accept it and believe it. You have to use what you learn, not just learn it. The ability to go to God in prayer is a glorious gift that has been given to us by God, and it should not be taken lightly. Our prayer life is between us and God, and it is important. It is private. It is essential. If we truly want to keep ourselves away from sin, then we must study the word. We must understand what we study by attending church services. We must attend church meetings. We must not backslide. Our hearts and minds need to be prepared for when sin presents itself. That is the fight against temptation. It is your fight against temptation. Your heart has to be in the right place, and the Holy Spirit does that for you. But you must choose to have that happen. It's your choice. You have got to make the choice. The Word of God contains all that we need to know about how to live and how to be pleasing to God. To just stop an evil action is good, but to replace that evil action with good is better, and that comes from the Holy Spirit. When you consider the, the, uh, the addictive nature of sin, if we do not fill our lives with good, sin can very easily find its way back in. When dealing with sin, it is always good to stop the evil that is in our lives. But we also need to walk according to the word of God, follow the principles and receive the revelation from the Holy Spirit. And we are guided by our church services and our church meetings. Sin is dangerous, and we need to keep a close watch on ourselves. 
to be sure we are not being lured away by our own desires. Hearts must be changed and decisions must be made. It's a choice. Will you make it? It may take a lot of work, but desires can be changed. These sins can be removed from you. With God, sin can be stamped out. Our hearts and desires can be changed to desire the things of God, but we have to want to change. You know yourself better than anyone. Make a plan and follow it. Chances are, if you're attending church, you've already received the advice and direction. It's a choice to take. Receive that advice and direction and do something. Many years ago, I did, and I thank God I did. Because of the right choice, I have a loving marriage and a flourishing business and a peaceful home. You can't buy that anywhere. That only comes from God. Is that what you want? It's open for the taking. Reach out with prayer. Ask God for help. Attend church service. Attend the meetings. Be part of that spiritual community. You're not alone. We're fighting together. Open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Don't resist what Jesus has to offer. Be ready. Be changed. My name is Dave. May you be blessed.